Some of the people watching this video will already have a good password, but most of you do not. And worst of all, some of you might think that you actually went about picking a good password with what you think is a high IQ method, but it's actually a terrible method and your password is easy to crack. So first of all, this is going to serve as more of a guide for picking a master password, which you will use to secure your password manager. If you aren't familiar with password managers, I have a video on KeePass XC, which is the same program that you see right here. And I consider it to be one of the best password managers. And essentially what this program does is it encrypts a database of passwords that you would just copy and paste into your clipboard and then put it into your browser for whatever thing that you need the password to get into. And that way there's only one password to remember because any good password manager is also going to come with a function that allows you to generate a pseudo random password of a very long length and a large variability of characters. That way you will have a password with a significant amount of entropy behind it. KeePassXC, for example, allows you to create a password that is up to 128 characters and using every key on your keyboard and then some that you need to use special functions to access. But our password to access this manager can't be something like this that you see on the screen because this is absolutely impossible for a human being to remember. So how do we handle something like this? Well, first of all, we have to understand how password cracking actually works. Typically, there are two methods of password cracking, brute force and dictionary attacks. Brute force simply goes through and generates a hash for every possible combination of characters within a certain length. So, for example, if we are going to try to brute force a nine character password, then the program would first generate a hash for the password 00000000000 and then compare that hash to the one that we got from the database that we downloaded from whatever unsecure website or service that you signed up to. And then if that doesn't match, we would then create a hash of 00000001, compare that, and so on. Now in reality, brute forcing is actually a little bit more sophisticated than this. Because if you haven't noticed, most websites and services won't even let you create a password that is just nine characters of the same thing in a row. So they'll probably take those things into account. There's really no point in trying to brute force passwords that you know can't exist. So those would be removed if the hacker isn't just a bottom of the barrel script kitty. I mean, this is really basic stuff that any hacker would know about. But regardless of what combination you're using, nine characters isn't going to be long enough. There are password cracking rigs, which are set up much in the same way that Bitcoin mining rigs used to be. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these password cracking rigs were just created from retired Bitcoin mining rigs because they work in the same way in that they utilize multiple high powered GPUs, often eight or 10 or possibly more 1080 Ti's or RTX Titans, which can chew through every possible password within nine characters within a few days. So if you use a password like this, while it meets the criteria for almost any website or login manager you might use, this would get completely wrecked by a GPU cluster because that might be calculating as many as 100 billion hashes per second. And what makes this password even worse is the fact that it's hard for a human to remember. This password is basically a permutation of the word Dogecoin, 
written in leet speak with some characters moved around and then a pound symbol added to the end. So this password is kind of hard for a human being to remember, but also easy for a computer to guess. Therefore, it's a terrible password. A better way to pick a password, and this is actually the same method that XKCD recommends, is to pick four words and then append them right after another. So we can see here in the comic that they showed a password similar to the Dogecoin one that I showed you before, and this is an example of a bad password. Actually, this is a little bit better than Dogecoin because this is, um, it looks like it's 11 characters long, uh, which isn't that bad. You know, obviously won't get wrecked like a nine character password would. Um, but what the comic recommends is that you use something like correct horse battery staple. Now, a password like this would completely defeat brute force methods. Even if you left everything as lowercase in the password hashing program, you still have 44 bits of entropy, which means that there's going to be two to the 44 tries. That's what it's going to take to brute force this. And to put that time into perspective, you and the hacker would be long dead, and it would be up to your great-grandchildren to finish the job of hacking. Uh, so if your adversary knows that you're using a password like this, they're not even going to try to brute force it. They're going to hit you with what's called a dictionary attack. With a dictionary attack, we don't just increment through digits. We don't go, you know, 000 and then 001. We actually have a text file that contains all of the words in the English language or possibly just the 1,000 most or 10,000 most common ones. And we will go through and hash those and then compare them to the hash of your password. And of course, we can have the dictionary append multiple words and do a comparison of those as well. And that's how they go about uh, cracking a password with a dictionary attack. Now, the specific example that XKCD gave is actually not that good of a password. Because first off, when you're picking a password, you should always assume a worst case scenario, which is that the hacker who is trying to crack your password knows the method that you used to create it. So we should assume that this hacker knows we're using four words appended one after another. Now, if we examine these words, correct, horse, and battery are all within the 10,000 most commonly used words. So the amount of tries to break these three would be 10,000 to the power of three, or one trillion, which really is a piece of cake for our GPU cluster that can do up to 100 billion hashes per second. The fourth word, staple, is a little bit better. Uh, this probably won't be in the top 10,000 most common words. However, you should assume that anyone who's going to try and crack your password is going to do some intelligence gathering and social engineering before they go and construct their dictionary. And I can tell you this, if my target works in an office or has a job that involves paperwork, staple will most likely be in my list of 10,000 words because it's more relevant to my target and I would make that assumption based on the intel that I gathered. So in this scenario, the key space for correct horse battery staple is probably going to be 10,000 to the power of four which would be cracked in about one day by our high-end GPU cluster. So how do you go about picking a good password then? Let's finally get to the reason why you clicked on this video. The multiple word approach is great because it defeats brute forcing and it lets us use a very long password that we can actually remember. But the trick is to use words which are not going to be in any type of dictionary that is used to crack passwords. So instead of using common nouns like correct horse, battery, staple, uh, we should try to use 
words that are something like a brand name or a name of a character from a TV show or even a word that you made up. That would be ideal because if you make up a word and you don't tell anybody about it, it's virtually impossible for somebody to guess it or to social engineer it. So a good password would be something like Kakarot, Armalite, Illadelph, Chungus. It's over 30 characters long, so it's impossible to brute force. And none of these words are going to be in any type of dictionary. Uh, maybe Kakarot would show up if you had some kind of like Dragon Ball Z dictionary, or maybe if you had uh, a Japanese dictionary of Japanese names. Um, but that's pretty unlikely. So the only hope for a hacker to break this is going to be social engineering. Uh, so it's also not a good idea for you to pick words that are going to be really specific to you. You know, if you're someone who's always blogging about Goku and bongs and building AR-15s and you have Big Chungus as your profile picture, then all of a sudden Kakarot, Armalite, Illadelph, Chungus is not that good of a password. But as long as you aren't giving away big hints like that, it's safe to say that your password is going to be uncrackable. And you could even take this a step further by inserting a random number or a random symbol somewhere in the middle of one of these words. Um, I wouldn't really recommend putting it in between the words because everybody does that. So chances are the hacker's password cracking software is going to account for something like that. But if you were to stick a pound symbol or an asterisk somewhere right in the middle of one of these words, then the hacker would just be forced to include symbols in the brute force attack, which makes it much, it's gonna make it take much, much longer since there's more possibilities for each individual character, more bit entropy. Uh, you could even go further by substituting some of these letters for numbers. Now, don't do some obvious type of leet speak like replacing the O with a zero or the E with a three. These types of permutations are well known and password crackers will take them into account. But if you're replacing something like an L with a six, that's random enough that nobody is even going to think about it. And this should go without saying, but don't make your password password or one, two, three, four, five, six, or a keyboard walk like QWERTY. Uh, if you don't know what a keyboard walk is, I mean, just look at your keyboard. It's literally when you go from left to right or right to left or up and down. All of those things are built into password crackers. Um, and you also shouldn't make it personally identifying information that's easy for someone to figure out, like your first name and last name. Someone can literally just look you up in the phone book and figure out your password, and that's pretty stupid. So if these are any of your passwords, you need to go change them. And like I said at the start, use a freaking password manager. If you aren't, then I can guarantee that you are reusing the same password or a basic permutation of it for everything that you sign up for. And if your password on some type of a hentai enthusiast form is a close match to your bank pen, then you're gonna get fucked harder than the Japanese schoolgirls after the giant octopus walks in because that password's going to get leaked because I think we all know that those types of forums don't have great security. And then there goes all of your money. But anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Be sure to share it with people that have good passwords and especially share it with people who have bad passwords. Leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you know when new content is being released. Peace out.